Well, that was a fun conversation. I, I, I think that is it's really important for us to always remember that, you know, humans are humans. We all have a different perspective and we're not going to grow and, and live and be better people if we're not on a regular basis being outside of our own personal comfort zones. <laughs> You know, that's one of those interesting things I really like to think about. I really like to put myself in those situations lately, especially just in my own mind of what would make me uncomfortable. I don't know why, but I, I think I really just like to be at conflict almost all the time. Well, maybe that's why... Um, but how do you really grow if you don't have conflict? I mean, really. That's probably why we love to trade so much. and Because you're, we're always in, always in conflict with our with our research we're always in conflict with our uh, recognition of chart patterns we're always in conflict with seasonalities uh, all these things cause us such conflict and fear is a big aspect of uh, how we live is when to execute when to get out uh, the fear of missing out all of those things things uh, that's how we primarily make our livings and that is a um, we live in conflict that we do you know you think about how most people live their life and I think most people probably avoid conflict at almost any chance I, I really don't <laughs> think most people like conflict at all I think a lot of people, they think that they want to go traveling and they really just want their comforts of home in a different place. Yeah, I don't think people that have this uh, fanciful notion of travel really understand what travel means. It means being very uncomfortable. Well, it should mean being very uncomfortable. Yeah. I think if you're going to do it right, you should be uncomfortable. Well, yeah. at least it should be... And let me take that, you know, people might misconstrue with that, what I'm saying with that, because when we are talking about this conflict and uncomfortability, you go to a foreign land, no matter if you're in first class uh, flights, if you have a, a driver waiting on you, you're in the nicest hotels, you are in an extreme place of uncomfortableness because uh, people look a little different, they're speaking differently, you don't understand. The signs and instructions are uh, mostly in languages you don't know, even though most of them now do have some English, but it's still confusing. You're not exactly sure where to go. Uh, or what to do or, when you're there. Or what to do. Even if you've planned it out before, you're like, okay, I want to go see these couple of hot spots. Well, you know what they say about the best led plans of mice and men. Yeah, that's right. And, and there's a lot of uh, uncomfortableness about that. Uh, from terrain, from language barriers, to what to eat at a restaurant when you can't read the menu. <laughs> but, you know, really, those moments of uncomfortability really lead to the best stories when you oh, get back, best though. best stories. It's kind of like a... Uh, <laughs> my younger brother, I'm in Switzerland with him, and we're in this German uh, speaking area, and we couldn't read the menu. He sees margarita, he orders it, thinking he's going to get a margarita, but he ends up getting a pizza 30 minutes later. <laughs> margarita sounds good. <laughs> it was just hilarious. You know, the <laughs> It didn't quench his thirst, but he wasn't hungry anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you wouldn't be hungry. I was thinking of the more bold experiences of when you travel, and it often does not go the way you planned. And in a moment, it seems like, man, why can't this go right? Why, what's this holding me back from having this good trip? Why is this in the way? And we focus on all these downsides when you don't see the potential upside in it. I like to think of when we were in Argentina. So if you haven't heard this story, this is a really fun story. We're traveling through Argentina, driving, and we barely speak enough language between the both of us to get the car filled up with gas. <laughs> and I mean, we have both of us to figure that out. And 
it apparently is a big deal to have your lights on when you're driving through Argentina. To not have them on. No, to have them on. Oh, yeah, yeah you yeah. got to. Yeah, yeah, you have to have them on. So we're driving much faster than you would drive on the streets in the United States. <laughs> I won't say how fast we were going, but we would have been going over any uh, speed limit in the continental United States. Outside of our comfort zone, baby. Yeah, outside, baby. <laughs> and... Um, they have these little bunkers that are pulled off on the side of the road where they check your registration and make sure your lights are on. Well, again, we don't speak much Spanish. So my brother over there is driving and we get pulled over and waved to the side. Hola. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, okay, why are we getting waved to the side? I'm in the passenger seat. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Kevin goes to this concrete bunker in the middle of nowhere. Think of if you've ever driven through war zone, war zone to Albania or uh, <laughs> <laughs> Serbia, I mean, it looked like a, like a 15 by 15 square box of concrete. And not a pretty box of concrete. Yeah, very Just, ugly. Yeah. And so my brother comes back to the car after about... I don't know, two minutes. Can you give us some, ex what was going on in a bunker? Cause you can tell that much better than me cause well, you have the firsthand experience. Well, the, the, the guys uh, get me out. There were three of them. One was a, a short squatty guy and he seemed to be the one in charge. One was a taller, more really in fit guy. He seemed a little bit more laid back. And then there was uh, some other guy that seemed to be just kissing the ass of the guy in charge. And which might surprise anybody that's never seen government officials, but it happens. So we're, they, they take me in there and he has this little calculator thing that has a receipt. Well, as he typed and hit return, this receipt came out and he just put this out and, and said, you, you, you owe this. this you know, and I didn't know what, I felt like he was trying to get over on me. I didn't know what the fine was for. I didn't understand it at all. And they're really aggressive acting and which made me feel like we could possibly be in a lot of trouble but we are hours from any other town civilization at all and so I felt relatively comfortable in that for a number of reasons and they uh, proceeded to get more aggressive with me and finally I came to understand that they wanted uh, a crazy amount of pesos, which equaled 400 US dollars. And I still didn't know what for, because they would have no idea that we were speeding because we had slowed down whenever we saw them from way far away. And anyway, that didn't get it. So I just stood up. I'm at this table, this, this solid metal table, this very uncomfortable chair. Two of these guys were right on me, practically yelling where the boss guy is sitting there with his figures pointing at the numbers and I just wasn't having it. So I just stood up and then they start yelling. I have no idea what they're saying. It, it would appear that they were telling me to stay and not to get up and leave, but I didn't care. So I just started walking out and I went to the trunk of this little tiny vehicle that we had rented because it was the biggest one, which happened to be really small. And I start pulling out some cash and then I, I change my mind. Something clicked in my mind that I needed to do something differently. And I was willing to uh, pay the price for whatever may happen. And I did not know what was going to happen. So I just looked inside the car and opened the door and told my brother, said, just follow me. And he had no idea what was about to happen. <laughs> In his words, he likes to say, uh, never been through an Argentine jail, so this is a good day to find. <laughs> Go visit one. Good day to figure it out, right? <laughs> They're ready to roll with it, which in travel, I think you should be always willing to say yes. <laughs> so I go over. Uh, these guys are still uh, right there. They're real close on me. And by me opening up the trunk, I think they felt like I was just going to pay them and then we would be done. But instead of that, I walked straight up to them. And right before I got mm, five or six feet, I pulled out my phone and turned my camera on 
and grabbed the boss guy that was the most rude out of all of them, grabbed it and went to hug him tight. Like it was an aggressive hug, but I started laughing and I have this natural tendency to just laugh and smile. And so I started to take this selfie and he flips out. He says, no, 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 no selfie, no selfie, no, no, no. And then, he, and I, cause then I started thinking it was even funnier. So I started just trying to take pictures of them. I was like, oh yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Cause I knew they knew what okay meant. I was like, it's okay, it's good. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and finally, after some aggravation on their part, the, the squatty little guy that had the Napoleonic complex <laughs> just started yelling, uh, free, 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 free. That was the only English word he knew, which to me let me know it was okay for us to leave. And it was. <laughs> it was great. Well, let me add, that is living outside of the comfort zone. <laughs> let me add a little bit of extra color to this because when Kevin came to the car, he was not that uh, jovial bouncing self of, okay, let's take some pictures. It was we're angrily counting out this money and then something just switches, that mental elasticity to adapt to the situation takes hold. And instead of us being angry, paying the fine and going away and letting it ruin what was otherwise a wonderful day, we added even more excitement to the day and made it a very colorful story that we can now share with you. So we have counted out this money and in so few words, Kevin just says, no, we don't need this. So we put the money back. So we had the safe hold of, oh, here's our money, but we're not gonna use this form of currency. We're gonna go and expose these pictures. Let's have fun with it. Let's take this to the next level. Let's start trying to take these pictures. Well, as Let's the take guy, control of the situation. Yes, let's take it and let's flip it. Let's change this around and make them as uncomfortable as they're making us. So the guy that's, oh, free, free. The one tall guy was probably the, uh, the coolest. He nicest. was the coolest. He, he really helped us out in that situation because he wouldn't let us take a picture with him showing his insignia. But we did get a very nice picture with him in front of this horrible concrete bunker that we share to this day because we make these travel books when we travel <laughs> and we want to, to keep these memories fresh. That's something that's also very interesting is when you're traveling, taking the pictures, not just to take the pictures to say, oh, this is going to look good on my Instagram. Let me take a picture of the Sistine Chapel, you know, selfie. We take the pictures to remember the experience, not to show off for somebody else, our friends and family, which only leads to a shallow okay, you did that. Well, you know, we, we were talking about uh, living you know, outside of our comfort zones to grow, like we, I take a lot of photos on our travels and I don't use them to post on, uh, post all of our pictures on social media or any of that kind of crap. I like them, like you said, for our memories and to help us reflect on those and remember how we grew in those certain situations. And I mean, hell, here's a good example of one right here. We just have a bunch of these. And this is uh, us and we were sitting, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's a picture looking out from the, the main Venice walkway. And it's just a little book with uh, all of our pictures and all of our memories. And I do that everywhere we go and it's a good exercise. And it's a good exercise to reflect back and think, all of those things that we learned and how we learned it and the fondness of the memories. And uh, that's a good practice with everything in life too. Just in our previous uh, video that we made about uh, why people hate most people, which is a great video, you should watch it. And it is one way for us to realize that we are connected as humanity. There are really other beautiful places around the world. There are beautiful and wonderful people all around the globe and they're not so far off and it's not such a foreign idea that uh, they're good people around the world. They're actually good people right next door to you too. Uh, even if you don't think exactly alike, there is common ground with all of us. And in order to get to that common ground, it does take many cases us living outside of our comfort zone to grow. 
I think not only living outside the comfort zone, but being comfortable outside of the comfort zone. And one thing I think back on is we were in Venice and we were somewhat lost because they just dumped two cruise ships worth of people on Venice, which all those I, people that we said we hated in the other video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you dump the cruise ships on Venice, it, it definitely changes it because those people aren't there to enjoy the food or the culture they're of Venice. Hours. They're there to get their Instagram pictures or to say that they were there. And we were almost having a little stressful situation because we were trying to get somewhere and we we're almost going against the clock because we had a schedule. And one member of our party goes to ask one of the, uh, I guess it was somewhat of a police officer there, how to get directions. And well, the police officer gently chastised the person that we were with and said, well, good morning. Well, we took it as, oh, well, we need to go somewhere. You're a person to help us, help us now, which is a wrong idea. And I have looked back on this moment for my own personal growth and seen that as one of those moments that really stick out in your life of when you need help or you're in an uncomfortable situation, the best thing that you can possibly do is not get frustrated, take a step back and ask the other person, at least, how are you doing? Good morning. Some kind of courtesy, if you want to get a courtesy, say, good afternoon, officer. We're trying to get to this in this location. Do you mind helping us out? If you can, that's great. If you can't, I think it is a mistake to just say, hey, me American, me need to know where to go. You know, we need to say, excuse me, is there a language barrier? Are we going to have a difficult conversation here or is this going to be an easy conversation? But being polite and a little bit of geniality towards another person. Manners. Manners goes a long way to helping yourself get over and through that situation. And it's going to be more pleasant for the other person because they're going to be more willing to help you. Yeah, whatever you just walk up to uh, the cop on the street and go, hey, where do I go to get the, you know, wherever? And, and you're rude and and, uh, and maybe not even necessarily rude. You're well, just it's taking, an you're unintentional taking, rudeness. Yeah, you're, you're taking for granted uh, the whole situation that they're a cop, you need help or whatever. It's a... Uh, that's a funny, 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 funny thing. It, it does remind us that it is important that we do have these gentle niceties about us and that we do separate ourselves from outside of the comfort zone and be comfortable in the uncomfortableness. Just like the story we told just a minute ago that you didn't know what was going to happen. You could tell that I was feeling rather aggressive and... It, it could be a, um, a very weird circumstance <laughs> in, in Argentina in the middle of nowhere. And we were both very comfortable outside of our comfort zones. And that takes a lot of practice. It, it's a lot of practice. That, that's something that doesn't just hit you overnight. That, that, the, the more you do things that are unfamiliar, the better you get. Uh, the better you get. It's just uh, a good example, too. I, I didn't like uh, reading out loud when I was a young kid. And uh, people would laugh at me in school because I was really bad at it. And so I had this big fear of looking dumb and it, because I wasn't very good at it. And then with some practice, I'm not the best, but I'm a pretty damn good reader out loud. And a lot of people aren't because they, they don't want to live outside of their comfort zones in that way, uh, or, or in a bunch of ways. That's just one example of, of how I overcame mine. And so it is important for us to have a more uh, fulfilled life and not live in fear and just just do it. Uh, you're the only judge of yourself. Uh, we do have to take into consideration other people's opinions of us, especially if we live in a tight-knit community or if we live uh, or around people that we want to do business with in some capacity, uh, what they think of us. We want to be credible. We want to be honest. We want to be uh, forthright in, in our discussions. And 
but you still live outside of your comfort zone. And wow, does life get so much better. And really, is it making life better <laughs> really the end goal of anything? Yeah. Like that's why people think they want to travel is to make life better. One of the things about travel that I like is you get to see your home, where you live, the good things about it, and then the bad things about it. Yeah, and, and I like whenever we travel because no matter where we go, there we are. You know, that is a very good point because, you know, you can only be where you're at. Yeah. And so if you're unhappy with yourself uh, and then you go off to some foreign land, you're still going to go to that foreign land being unhappy with yourself. You're not going to escape yourself by going somewhere else. Uh, whatever uncomfortableness, whatever is bothering you is not going to just stay there. You know, it's kind of like uh, a couple of videos ago when a Talking about it, enjoying the, the present, enjoying the now, living in the moment, is that talking about travel, people go on vacation. They get on vacation and then all they can think about is hurrying up, let's hurry and go see this, hurry, go, let's go, 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 and then, but not it, letting it absorb, not, not taking it in, not enjoying it. And then you get halfway through the vacation and all of a sudden, uh, I've seen this countless times with other people. Oh God, we got to, we only got two days left. This is our last day. This really sucks. And you're like, this is your vacation. This was one of your vacation days. Don't dwell on some place or thing that you're not in or doing. You're in the foreign place. You're there now. Enjoy that time you have. That's the time you gave yourself to go do it. It's, it's really uh, an interesting phenomenon how people always uh, seem to live outside of the present moment, attempt the best they can to live inside of their comfort zone, and then... Uh, always forget that you can't escape anything. You're always carrying everything inside you. You are. And I think that one of the best ways to avoid that pitfall of what you just said is, oh, we only have one more day left or you're rushing to go here or there is I had a, a conversation with a really good friend not too long ago that is very well traveled. And he said something that I've never thought about before. He said, all right, if you plan a trip, and it's six months out you're not planning that trip and you're going to have fun there you don't have to wait until you're traveling and you're in that country to have fun you get to savor that trip for six months you get to savor going there you have the anticipation of what am i going to do where am i going to go you get to think about all these different nuances and aspects of your travel that while you're just there in the moment, you can't fully grasp. You need the buildup. You get to savor it for that six Sounds months. Sounds like you're talking about foreplay. It is. <laughs> it is foreplay. It really is. You're, you're enjoying the moment because once you get back on the plane and you're back in your home country, then that's over. That's your peak. That's your orgasm. It's gone. But then you get to look back and reflect and make it full circle and enjoy the things that you did when you were there. And if you didn't get to do something when you were there, like maybe throw a coin into the Trevi fountain and completely miss, I, I, know, I know it's happened. I've seen it. Didn't think it was possible, but you know, these things Trevi happen. Trevi a pretty big place. Yeah, it's pretty big. <laughs> But I guess that just means that you get to savor that miss. Like, well, okay, who can't hit the Trevi Fountain, right? Right. <laughs> you know, you go into that whole other category of where that was maybe annoying at the time or you looked a little silly. You get to tell a funny story about it later. It's like, oh, man, you'll never believe what I did or you'll never believe what Trey did or Kevin did. And then you get to have that whole experience again. You get to live and relive those moments, just like what we shared with you about our travel through Argentina and much of these other travel things that we've spoken of in this conversation. But back to the point is that you get to savor, savor each of those moments. Don't plan so much for what you're gonna have and just that enjoyment, well, like well, savor it all the way through. I think that is savoring being uncomfortable. It is savoring being See, uncomfortable. Whatever, so whatever, you can't grow as a better reader. You can't uh, grow to enjoy travel more. 
You can't grow in conversation without being outside of your comfort zone a good bit and to savor it, to realize this is our life. This is the, the stuff, the ingredients uh, being thrown into our, our meal that is life, that we should embrace it and love it and enjoy it. And the good and bad moments, uh, knowing in the bad ones that this too shall pass, that in the great moments, ah, I can't wait to have another wonderful moment, either similar or dissimilar, but just equally as great. And that is the joy of living fully and outside of your comfort zone. So sometimes you don't even know you have a comfort zone because everything you do is was outside of it. So now everything is just comfortable. I really like that because like, I've had people in the past because I've done a fair amount of traveling just by myself. And one thing I really absolutely love to do, especially if I'm with myself, is to get on a bus or a subway or just walk and get as completely and utterly as lost as possible. Because I leave my cell phone disconnected from the grid. I don't get the international travel minutes because when I'm out, I want to be out. I don't want to be tied to what I was getting away from. I want to really enjoy that experience. And I know that, you know, when you get back to the hotel, you can use the Wi-Fi to connect and do that. But I really enjoy being dropped off or putting myself in those situations where I have absolutely no idea what's going on, where to go, and I like figuring it out. It's like this big grand scale of a puzzle of life that you get to, to feel and experience because you don't get to see things and really take them in, or I personally don't, unless I really had to work to get out of that situation or to work to get into that situation or to find the little nuances of the city. Because if you're only traveling to the major landmarks, if you're only traveling to the Sistine Chapel or you're only traveling to the Duermo, you're only traveling it, down it the Grand Canal. It would be like walking through Venice and only staying on the Grand Canal. It would be exactly like that. <laughs> that would be horrible. Or it would be like going to a resort in any country and staying on the resort's premise. The whole time. The whole time. I mean, I can see where that is fun for maybe a day or two. Well, uh, yeah, if you're in a just a resort town like Cancun or something, maybe, but not even there, I don't think. No, because there's there's different little nuances. Because I've been in towns like Cancun and Cozumel, and I've got to know some of the people that were in the shops, and they will show you a much better time than. If you were just hitting the hot spots in the resorts, I've never been afraid to just get into somebody's car and go. I might not exactly recommend that for everyone. No, it won't. but for me, I don't have those fears that I'm not going to well, make it out. If we okay. would not have lived outside of our comfort zone and all of our travels, and since we were talking about Venice, if we would not have just meandered all the way around and all those little nooks and crannies we would uh, have not stumbled upon the uh, the one last remaining uh, art form of creating uh, letterheads and stationaries you know writing papers uh, that we have and that we exchange between each other we would not have stumbled across those uh, uh, rare handmade journal places the, that we bought journals from in Italy or the cigar holders, uh, all of those wonderful things. If we wouldn't have just stopped in uh, Udaipur in, in uh, India and just randomly walked into this uh, tiny little bookstore, we would have not uh, found these custom-made and handmade papers and leather journals. You know, there's just so much you miss whenever you just have the fear of not uh, saying, no, I'm not gonna do that, I can't do that. Then you miss out on that whole other experience. Well, I don't know where we got cut off there because we didn't recycle the cameras, but uh, that was a fantastic conversation about how we have to live outside of our comfort zones in all of these different ways in order to be better humans yeah so if this part got cut off 
Kevin mentioned that he said that growing, living outside of comfort zone is important more now than ever. And I think it's always been important through the course of human existence. And I like to think of Edison inventing the light bulb. He did it wrong hundreds of times, even maybe a thousand times. And if he would have kept thinking, oh, I'm right, and not backtrack and think, well, how can I do it better? And not admitting that he was wrong and admitting a short-term defeat to come back and regroup and regain ground on his own thinking, then he would have never invented a light bulb. He would have never made that step. Well, you can't just give say, up. The, there's the, well, the legend of whether it's true or not, but the, the lesson is the value. Is I didn't learn how to how to fail. I didn't look at it as a failure every time it didn't work. It was that was a good experience because now I learned that doesn't work, so I can discount that now. I can go to another idea. I can keep progressing on the path to my goal, and I learned another way not to do it. Which that is really invaluable, and that goes to living outside of your comfort zone. And if you live outside of your comfort zone, like we said a little while ago, that uh, ultimately there is no comfort zone. You're just comfortable in all situations and all things everywhere. Because you've practiced being outside of your comfort zone so much, you don't even know where the boundary of your comfort zone is anymore. That is that's really true. And it goes to almost everything in life. The more you do something, the more you expand yourself and your horizons, the more you put yourself in these situations, the more comfortable you become at it. And that just goes to how anybody is great at anything. You think anybody that's in any professional sport or profession of any kind just picked it up and were great at it? No, they had to really work and strive at it. Of course, some people have more of a knack for something than others. And if you're trying to do something that's not your knack, if you're completely uncoordinated, you're probably not going to be a professional ballerina. But living outside your comfort zone to find the things that you're good at, to find the things that you like, to find the things that you really enjoy, comfort doesn't necessarily have to play a role in it. No, but being uncomfortable, like you said, and I love that, is that be comfortable in your uncomfortableness. You know, be comfortable outside of that comfort zone. You are uncomfortable, so learn how to be comfortable with that. Yeah, to be comfortable with your uncomfortability is what I like to say. Yeah, uh, it's so so valuable. I, I can picture in my mind for some reason right now the the, uh, the the young lawyer who's inexperienced for his first time at his first trial. Yeah, you know how uncomfortable he is public speaking and there's a life on the line and all these things, you, you all this fear, uh, you have to get over that in order to do your job. You have, and our job is to live. Our job is to be the best versions of ourselves we can be. And the, the way to do that is to, whenever that fear creeps in, and we say, oh, I don't want to do that because I'm fearful. You make up excuses why you don't want to do it. Oh, I'm busy right now. Or, no, I really don't want to. Uh, do that. I really don't want to do this. When ultimately it's fear. I, I'm, I'm fearing doing that because I don't want you to think I'm dumb. I don't want you to think less of me because I can't. Uh, I think that I can't do a good job at at that thing. And so fear is is the biggest enemy of us. Period. Like remember how fearful we were before we jumped out of a plane. No, you know. Yeah, because we were drunk. <laughs> 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 you say alcohol, I say medicine, tomato, <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But that was, a, uh, that was a, the way we got over. Uh, we used whatever crutch was available to get over that fear and just go do it. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Is you said crutch. And there, I don't consider those things so much as a crutch. Those things like yeah. alcohol to get us to jump out of a plane? Yeah, I don't consider that so much as a crutch. I look at it as a... Uh, an, as a helper? Yeah, as a helper. As a, well, that's what a crutch is? It helps us walk to the plane. Well, no, no, because <laughs> if you use a crutch too much, you become dependent on the crutch. No, that's true. So if you use something to help you get farther, 
rather it be in personal life, business life, relationships, anything, if you use it too long, it becomes a crutch. But if you use it in moderation, like all things, you can use those things to your advantage. We have developed many things in our modern society to make life easier. That doesn't mean that we should call the things that make life easier a crutch. We could all go out to the river and beat our clothes on rocks to clean them. But why would you not use a washing machine? A washing machine is not a crutch. A washing machine is a tool. Well, and I consider cigars a, a mental tool. That, well, they're a networking tool as well. Yeah, you know, they're a big, big networking tool. And they really solidified a lot of relationships in, in my life. And... Well, when I need these moments of reflection and contemplation and thinking of what the life's next step's going to be, well, I know that I'm going to have about an hour of solid, blocked out time if I enjoy a fine cigar. Because if I do that, it's going to allow me the time to sit and reflect. I'm not going to be, uh, you know, this is the room in the house that I, that I choose to smoke, and I have the built these uh, air filters in here to suck it all out of the room. And uh, so this is my place. This is the that that is not a crutch, so much as it is a uh, a tool to use to calm down. Don't get so excited. We're just going to sit and enjoy and watch the magical smoke rise our thoughts and desires and. Everything that we hope for to go into the universe to hopefully the universe says, hey, that's a good idea. We're going to help you with that. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed our conversation and just sitting with us in this little moment of things that we like to do, invite y'all in. Because I like to give people at home, if y'all are willing to invite y'all really into what we really do, to the things that we really enjoy and the parts of our life that make us humans, the parts of our life that we enjoy the parts of our life that are sacred almost. We we're inviting you into these moments. And I just hope everyone enjoyed it as much as we did. And, and thank y'all so much for joining us because the, the, the also how much we enjoy brotherly talks about living outside of our comfort zone. It is, uh, it is what we have striven and strived to do nonstop in our lives. And, and in that conversation and all these different topics that are surrounded with that idea and that reality of living outside of your comfort zone, we enjoy sharing that with you. And we're glad that we have uh, y'all continuing to be with us. And it means a lot to us. And we appreciate it. Yeah. So thank you to everyone out there. You can catch us on all the alternatives. We're splashed all over the internet. Mysticsoftexas.com has all of our videos and they're bundled in nice little categories that you can go check us out on any topic that we might have already put out in the past. And we also put out new videos very regularly, more than once a week. So everyone out there has a good day.